There's nothing better than going on vacation, but it's often where we feel like we sabotage our results and our diet and exercise routines go to die. I wanna share seven tips with you so you can stay on track when you travel and keep moving forward towards your weight loss goals. However, I do just wanna mention that vacations can and should be a time to relax. We wanna make sure that we're not just restricting because often forcing restriction when we really need to relax and embrace the balance is why our diet doesn't work out long-term and why we don't see the results we want. We end up not really being able to diet on vacation while also not allowing ourselves to fully relax. And this ultimately backfires. However, if you travel for work or just travel often and want to find the lifestyle balance right for you, these tips can help you stay consistent with your macros and your workouts while not at home. Don't feel guilty about not using every time you travel as an excuse to splurge. I know sometimes our friends or family can make us feel awkward for caring, but we need to stay focused on what also makes us happy in our progress towards our goals. Because we can't just always make the excuse that this is a once in a lifetime experience if we're traveling all the time. So what are seven travel hacks to keep you on track? Number one, save calories. I hate saying it this way, but it's also the simplest way to state it. Sometimes when on vacation, if you know there's going to be a bigger meal or even cocktails at dinner, things you'll want to enjoy, you wanna save calories for that meal. This means you will wanna focus on eating lighter or even increase your protein intake earlier in the day. This can help you find that balance so you don't go into a huge surplus and you even hit some macro minimums you set. And while a longer fast can also be an option if you do intermittent fasting already, please don't turn saving calories into starving yourself or you'll end up overeating at that later meal. Just think about going lighter with a protein focus earlier in the day to strike a balance. Number two, find restaurants in the area with healthier options. When on vacation, it can be fun to try local spots. And depending on where you're traveling to, there may be some great local places with super macro-friendly meals, or even meals they can tell you the portions on. Many restaurants even list macros on their website, so it never hurts to check. If you can't find the nutritional info, even try logging something similar to get an idea of the macros. You can often find recipes online that give you an idea of the breakdown. And also look for some chain restaurants. While yes, we want the best quality fuel, many chains do have nutritional info listed on their website. And if you find a dish or two that really works for you at those places, it can be easy to use that anytime you travel as a chain may be everywhere. But planning ahead to have some options to strike that balance can be key and let you play around with logging the meal to hit any calorie intake your macros you set. Number three, bring protein powder. Supplements are supplemental, but protein powder is one of the best things to have on you when you're on the go. It's generally easier to snack on carbs and fat and harder to eat easy, non-refrigerated protein sources. With a protein powder, you can keep it in your backpack or purse and be able to mix it in a water bottle, coffee, or even anything quick you can pick up from the store. Such an easy way to increase your protein and even save those carbs and fats for that later meal that you don't have as much control over with the family or coworkers. Number four, don't buy bulk snacks. Often when we go on a trip, we buy snacks at the airport and a bigger bag than we should eat in one serving. Or we buy snacks for the hotel room or Airbnb for our families even. While it can be helpful to have snacks if we don't really know when we'll get to eat or if the meals being provided for us will really work for us, we need to be conscious to not just have extra around as it will be tempting to eat it when you're not even hungry. It's easy to mindlessly nibble and let those calories add up. So be strategic with your snacks, especially if you have them around you all the time. Even portion out things so you aren't as tempted to keep snacking. Number five, plan in short workouts. Instead of trying to force yourself to maintain the same routine you would at home, Plan in some workouts you can get in even in your hotel room if you're super short on time. That plan to do something may lead to you doing more if you can find a gym or end up with more time. Not to mention, often you can find gyms with quick class options if that will help with the accountability of getting you moving. But simply doing something will also keep you in the routine and habit and mentally make you feel good. And often when we stay consistent with one habit, we want to stay consistent with the others. So even if it's a five minute mobility routine so you feel good when you get home to train harder, the consistency will pay off and even reverse some of the aches and pains we get from traveling. Number six, get out and walk. Even if you can't work out, often you will have little breaks in the day where you can get out for a walk. Not only is this a great way to stop mindlessly snacking, but it also does get you moving and can even allow you to explore the area more. Even if it's just to get coffee or grab food, try to move as much as you can during the day. 
Finding ways to get more active will help you even want to do other healthy habits and routines you want to maintain. Number seven, increase your intensity around your trip. In preparation of your trip, it's not a bad idea to occasionally get a bit more intense with your programming, especially so you could even use the trip as a deload workout week or recovery week. Prior to your trip may also be a time you're a slight bit more aggressive with the deficit, not going into an extreme deficit, but just using a more intense macro ratio over easier ratios to hit. You can then move to minimums on your trip, tracking to stay consistent, even if it's just to hold you accountable. And then when you come back, you might find you go into more of a cut ratio and cut workouts to lose a little bit you might have gained on vacation before relaxing back into more of a lifestyle balance. This one week before and after just can help with damage control and also mentally make us feel balanced when being a little less conscious of those healthy habits while traveling. Remember, vacations shouldn't be the time you stress out about your diet, but finding a balance, especially when we travel more often, can be key. Focus on doing the minimum, even just to maintain those results so you can continue to build when you're back at home and in your element. If you liked the video, make sure to like it, comment below if you have any questions, and subscribe, we're posting new videos each week.